You're free to be happy. You're free to live. You're free to die. You're free from the laws and the requirements of man. Because of Jesus Christ, you are alive forevermore. Thanks be to God. But here's the, here's the problem. You always have those people going around telling you it's not that easy. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to do some things. I grew up in that. Now some people think I'm bitter because I bring it up often. I am. <laughs> I resent it greatly. I get mad at times because I was cheated. Cheated out of a God who loved me. Separated from a Jesus who cared about me. Stuck in a little dark corner somewhere trying to get right with God and do everything perfectly. Being told that I could spend my entire life saved just to come to the threshold of the eternity and backslide and die and go to hell. I remember all of the stories. Oh, God, they had them. Scary stories that would make a 12-year-old squirm and a 14-year-old shake. Just they had the best stories of fear because they wanted you to run to the altar as though when you got up and the mood wore off, you wouldn't do the same thing again. Oh, I remember one story told about a captain who was out at sea, a noble man, and on his way home after two years at sea, he had a little cottage there in the bay, and his wife every night would put out a lantern so that her hubby could see it as he was coming into the bay to be home after two years of separation. And just within sight of his cottage, a storm arose and ripped the boat apart. And the man went down looking at the lights in his cottage. <laughs> and the story was, that's what can happen to you, sonny boy. <laughs> you little moron. <laughs> you little lustful teenager. You beer drinking, lying, stealing, cheating, fighting, having fun kind of guy. You, you youngster who ought to know better, you can get almost to the door and see the lights of home only to be <laughs> swept under, under by the waves of eternity and you'll spend your whole existence roasting on the cinder beds of hell. Knowing you came that close. But it was that second look at that fine chick. <laughs> and it was that cold Pap's blue ribbon <laughs> that you thought you'd just taste one more time. And a whole life of singing and preaching and praying down the tubes because you were too weak to make it. Oh, those stories go on by the thousands and they've kept people in bondage for decades and they've made people go to church just to keep their duty and they've caused people to teach their children unscriptural things. Someone was telling us the other day at breakfast or dinner, I don't remember which meal it was, that they grew up in the same atmosphere and they used to be told by their grandma, well, don't do bad things. If you do bad things, Jesus won't love you now. Jesus won't love you. So there's a whole generation of us grew, growing up, grew up thinking, Jesus is not going to love me if I do this. And I did it. And I liked it. <laughs> Does Jesus love me? Folks, this is a, I'm talking about bondage. You're laughing. But it's mental bondage, it's emotional bondage, it's, 
It's physical bondage. It's terrible, terrible, terrible. Because what he did on the cross was not just a, a, a sidebar, a, a, an afterthought. It was not God saying, well, what can I do? These people can't live right. What can I do? In fact, I love the song, but I got to tell you what I heard the other night, and I had to put my head down. Because one of the reasons we stay in trouble is because we're theologically illiterate. And Pentecostals love that Southern Pentecostal stuff. I told you the other day, it just makes people go. <laughs> the song called, or I won't say what it's called. But David, you remember the words. Just suppose they searched through heaven and tried to find someone willing to be the sacrifice for you and me. Uh, oh, what a Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Folks, that's wrong. They search through heaven. Who is they? Because there was only God. Do they have a search committee in heaven that looked down the pitiful earth and said, they need a Savior. We got to go find one. You go that way and I'll go this. Hello? Is there anybody up here willing to be a Savior? Are there anybody here that would be willing to become a human and down across. I'm looking for hands, volunteers. There'll be special rewards. That's absolutely stupid. It's an insult to Almighty God's salvation plan. They, there was no they. There was no search through heaven. There was not anyone trying to find a Savior. The Bible says before there was anything made, Jesus was already the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the earth. And if he was willing to do that, then I want you to hear me this morning. His salvation is greater than your human weakness. His grace is greater than your sin. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So I'm on my way to heaven. Yeah. Why? Because I'm a preacher? <laughs> Preachers are some of the biggest liars in the world. Love money, love women, love fried chicken, love Cadillacs and Mercedes. I'm the first one to say, I see a preacher on TV, I go, turn it please. <laughs> because I go to church, folks, Lots of people go to church. Was I born into it? You can't be born into it by blood or birth. You have to be born of the Holy Spirit of God. So why are we on our way to heaven today? Why does God accept us? Why are we pure and righteous and holy? Why are we already perfect yet being made perfect? Because we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he is the Son of God whose death on Calvary paid for our sins and we've been born again. Stand with me. So who is the... You can put the scripture back up there if you would, please. Thank you. Go to the next one. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. I'm telling my church, beware of people trying to drag you back and saying, well, you, you know you got to do certain things. Oh, boy. So who is a Christian? What constitutes a believer? We worship God in the Spirit. What does that mean? It means we're not legalistic doing it out of rote and habit. Does, it means we're not just going over things and chanting and mumbling and repeating. No, sir. We're free. And we worship. And we worship God. And we worship God in the spirit of joy and freedom. We rejoice in Christ Jesus. In Him alone. The only one worthy. The Jew that came to save us from our sins. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. And we have no confidence in the flesh. Nothing I do, nothing I've ever done gets me to heaven. My works are not a prerequisite. They are a result of knowing Jesus. Glorious my I want to sing it one more time, but I also want to say that if there is someone here who would like to come forward and trust in Jesus, or maybe there's someone who's kind of gotten back into your own efforts and feeling bad because you don't do enough for God, and you'd like to walk out of here this morning knowing that Jesus paid it all, not by works which you have done, but by grace you have been saved through faith. It is the gift of God. If you'd like to come down and just renew that, do it as we sing. who came down and who are coming down and who feel like maybe you need to come down, here's the deal. And it, here it is. When you confess your sins to Jesus, He forgives them and they are gone. They do not exist any longer. Any sin you can mention, He washes them away, it away, and they are never ever again a factor in your relationship with God. That makes me happy. That's just a couple of little simple things that I've learned down through the years. Having been brought up in a very, I mean an extremely judgmental church, where if you didn't come to our church, you were a devil. Right, that's right. And whether if you wore this or wore that or didn't wear it, oh my God, you were going to blister. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. Horrible. I've come to the place where I really do believe the words of Jesus now. I mean it. Now some people interpret this as getting looser, soft, compromising, giving in. Let's see what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7. Judge not 